Hello, my name is Brett Bensley, and I'd like to introduce you to the fine art of kaleidoscope making. This is our very first kaleidoscope and our very first episode of this, but if you come back, you're going to see a lot more. Today I'm going to introduce you to a kaleidoscope that was made available in the new Kaleidoscope Review magazine, which is now called the Incredible New Kaleidoscope Eclectic Review. In there, you will find plans for making a kaleidoscope of which this is showing you how to make that very kaleidoscope. I'd like to apologize for any buzzing sounds from the fluorescent lights above or any other strange noises such as my son stopping upstairs. But here we go. In there, in the magazine, it shows you the various items you need to cut in order to make this. I'm going ahead and cut the outside body and the eyepiece and in the next few sessions I'm going to show you how to cut the glass and the other parts and assemble the whole thing. First thing we need to do though is assemble the body and with some wood glue, some masking tape, we're going to start. I'm going to hold this piece off, the eyepiece, as you see I've already drilled the hole in it until later after this body has dried. If you're working on a whole series of these, what you will want to do is you'll want to cut a piece of wood that fits the interior of this scope so that it'll hold it into place while the glue dries. And I'll determine which end I want to be the front, which end I want to be the back. And I will butt this up against the inside of the body. This will be called the body tube. And I want it flush on the outside here. And I can just go ahead and press my finger in here to create a little fillet of any leftover glue there. The outside glue, of course, we'll end up having to uh, take off sand or whatever, which you'll see later. I'll then take some tape, which I will use to hold this in place, to use kind of basically as the clamp. Kaleidoscope world, we use a lot of tape. And fortunately, I do not have the best of tape to do this with. But we'll hold these these two pieces together. And then I'll go ahead and glue the other two. Now I'm going to glue this in this way so that when I assemble it together, both these are short. Hopefully you can see that. Both these are short, and then this will be flush down here what we put our eyepiece on. This end will be open in order to hold the wand that we're going to be putting on here. This time I'm going to put the glue on this piece. And spread it just a little. Apologize. Get some of my rather old tape. Again, Flush it up to the edge. Hopefully you can see where I'm making this in flush. This will be where the eyepiece is. This will be the piece where the wand is. Tape that one to hold it together. By the way, the wood that I'm using in this case happens to be some uh, mahogany that I got. Uh, you can use pretty well almost any kind of wood. I used to sell them with uh, cocobola, oak, walnut. My favorite was purple heart. Although, uh, that stuff when you get splinters, it really is quite painful. <laughs> So we have those two going. 
And now, what I'm going to do is end up putting them together like this and gluing them in that way. I plan to have some other informative kaleidoscope videos for you in the future. So if you want to send in your ideas or suggestions on what kind of things I should cover, let me know. I've been a professional kaleidoscope artist since 1991, I believe, although I had made them prior to that. And I have sold them in hundreds of countries. So you are learning from a professional kaleidoscope artist. I have not been known very recently to have been selling my kaleidoscopes. Mostly I do them on an individual basis and uh, usually for charities. Okay, now I'm bringing the two sides together. You can use wood clamps if you want to, but again, if you do so, I recommend you have have that uh, wood block made to fit the inside. Coat it with something to keep it from being stuck to the glue that's going to be on the inside. Um, good idea would be to coat it with paraffin or wax paper, and that should help you keep it from being glued. And I definitely have to get some better tape. Between now and next time. Okay, so there I go. I take the tape over. I'm not worried about the outside. I will be sanding it and finishing it later. I just want to make sure that these edges are pretty well clean and clear. And then I'll go ahead and take this other side. Yes, I also agree that this is probably not exactly the best woodworking form of assembly, but in this case, it gives you an idea. You can go ahead and uh, make finger joints, box joints, whatever you want to to hold these to hold these together. Uh, but that's up to you and and your your decision on how you're going to do it. And then what we have is we've got the body tube, and I'm going to finish wrapping it. Body tube assembled. Uh, I'm going to let it dry before I go any farther. And uh, then we can finish up the rest by adding the eyepiece, cutting the mirrors, put the mirrors inside, and putting the wand and the other pieces on it. And then we'll get to see a, a actual professional kaleidoscope and how it's made. Again, all the all the instructions and the patterns of the pieces you need are located in the Kaleidoscope Review magazine that, by the way, I produce. And you should see the uh, link to that at the bottom part of this, uh, in the comment section of this uh, uh, YouTube page. Thank you. Now what I'd like to do is show you the next step in this. <clears throat> Normally I cut a piece of uh, glass. In this case I'm using a piece of plastic. But if you want to cut glass, according to my instructions, you can use that as, you know, it's your choice. Uh, again, this is plastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it onto the eyepiece. It's a piece with the hole in it. <coughs> I'm going to use some 5-minute epoxy. And I'm going to be careful to make sure that I'm not going to place any where the hole view hole is going to be because I don't want to block our vision inside the kaleidoscope. Mix 
mixed up well. Place it around the eyepiece. Make sure again not to get any into it or to the point that when it squeezes, it squeezes out into the view part. And I'm just going to place the eyepiece, hopefully a clear section. We got a little bit on here anyway. Right on there. And you want to place it such that you know that this will fit inside the end of the body tube right there, which I know it will. So now it's time to let that dry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to glue that onto this and we can continue the process of making a kaleidoscope. The next step after this is dried would be to glue this thing onto here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just simply glue it on. I'll try to find a side which fits the best, but that seems to be it right there. So time for with the glue. And again, try not to get any on that clear eyepiece, especially where it might cover up the uh, view hole. And again, just need to. Tape it, that should be enough pressure. And then when that dries, we just need to do some simple things like sanding it and finishing it with some kind of finish. If you want to stain it, you can stain it. Uh, I'll show you some ideas on how to protect the inside so that you don't end up with a lot of dust and dirt inside of there. So, all right. The next step in our process would be to take the tape that holds it off and then what we'll need to do is we'll need to sand the edges all the sides and everything else so that it's um, smooth and then we'll want to round over the edges of the uh, scope so that it's smooth to hold. However, I recommend that what you do is you wad up some newspaper or some cloth in here to help protect the inside of the scope from getting a lot of uh, sawdust in it. So, I'm going to pause a minute and do that and come back and show you. As you can see, I've gone ahead and put some uh, paper towel in here. And you want to make sure you can get it back out without any problems because you don't want to leave that in there either but it'll help protect the inside from collecting sawdust which you don't want that in there because it does bother your mirrors and then what we do is we go ahead and we start sanding the scope make sure that the uh, the surfaces are nice and smooth and clean and even all the way around and then what we'll also want to do is we'll also want to round over the edges to, to uh, make it to sharp edges when you're holding it, to make it smooth edges when you're holding it, rounded edges I should say. And just go ahead and get towards the point where it's comfortable for you and it looks good. And then we go to the next step of sealing it or finishing it to get the look we want to look. By the way, this happens to be some mahogany that I picked up somewhere 
and uh, it, I think it's going to make a very nice looking kaleidoscope. Hello, and uh, I'm coming back to making the kaleidoscope. As you see, I kept the uh, paper in here to help protect the inside of the scope, which I still wanted in there. But now I also need to cover the eyepiece. And I find the best way for me to do that is usually get some tape, tear off a piece just a little bit, and stick it down in there. In my case, I'm going to try to use this drill bit here. And I want to protect that hole, I mean the, the glass or plastic or whatever I have in there. I can leave it sticking up a little bit, but I want to make sure that, that that plastic down there is covered. It would be best actually if I had glass in there because it's much easier to clean. Uh, but I use plastic just because that might be something you have available. Now the next thing is go ahead and coat it. In this case I'm going to do it with some clear, but you can coat it with any color paint you want, spray paint or whatever, or brush it on or paint it on. In my case I'm going to give it a couple little spray of uh, clear turns out to be a very nice color you can see I did not do a very good job of getting the glue off and for that you have to be careful about it but anyhow I'm, I'm still gonna let it go this way it still looks nice it's still a nice piece of wood and then I let it dry and give it a couple more sandings and until it gets to the texture and color whatever that I like uh, and again I keep that in there to help protect the inside and the next step will be for once this is finished and ready for the mirrors and the back piece and then I'll show you how those steps go the next step in uh, making our kaleidoscope is to actually make the heart of the kaleidoscope, which is the mirror system. Um, I went ahead and marked the back side. This looks like regular mirror, but this is called first surface mirror. And if you put your thumbnail against it, it looks like it's just touching the reflection. As opposed to regular mirror, where if you touch, there's a little gap. But I'll cover mirrors later in future videos. But for right now, I'm going to show you how to assemble. Uh, the original mirror system I purchased from Clarity uh, Stained Glass and usually they give this protective sheet that's on here. These are a little bit old. Again, you want to clean off your mirrors as well as you can without trying to abrade or wipe off the reflective side, the good side. And again, I usually mark the dark back side as being the back so that I know that that stays on the outside. The good reflective side goes inside. Again, I'll give more lectures, discussions on first surface mirror, hopefully in the future. Uh, there's a variety of tape you can use uh, to hold your mirror system together. My favorite happens to be uh, a metal tape. In this case I'm going to be using tape that I use for um, stained glass and uh, I usually take a couple of strips to hold the mirror system in place and no these are not perfect <coughs> so we take our reflective sides and we face them towards each other and then we'll take this one and again the reflective side place it in here and typically this becomes our mirror system I doubt if you can see that very well maybe you can you see there it starts to become a kaleidoscope okay. again I purchased these from Clarity but I, get, I have the pattern for the mirror system on the same page that I do for the uh, wood and then you tape the mirror system together holding it in place and when you get enough tape on here to hold it you do want to adjust it 
to make sure it has the correct reflections and that they're complete. And again, more detail will be on that, I hope, in future videos. And for right now, that's actually looking pretty good. It's not absolutely the best. And that'll help hold together. But again, I like to go ahead and reinforce the edge to help hold it in place. And also to help block any light that, that might come in and cause problems with our reflections. Careful not to cut yourself on this. Be very sharp. And I also hope in future videos to discuss some of the different types of tape. Uh, electrical tape, duct tape, duct tape, packing tape, scotch tape, or I should say masking tape and uh, you know metal tape various types and other ways of binding these mirror systems together in the meantime I hope you enjoy watching me tape up the edges And again, as we look through here, we try to balance or reestablish the uh, kaleidoscopic image to make sure it's correct. Now, you could use just a two mirror system as opposed to the three that I'm making right now. In which case, this smaller side will end up being just some kind of dark or black material. Again, I'm going to hold it up to my eye. Stick my finger down here and see if it does a good job of making the image, which I do like this. Looks pretty good. Now the thing is, is to get it inside our body tube. Now see, this end will be the, the larger end of the mirror system will be at the same level. In other words, I'll sh stick it in the tube like this. So this opening is in this area here. But to reduce extra light that comes through the edge of the mirror, I'm going to blacken the mirror. Now I like using uh, Sharpies for this. I've also used paint, fingernail polish, uh, Right of your things. You try not to get any on the inside of the mirror, though. That'll just ruin your image. Try to stay just on the edge of it. Now, this will go down into the tube. 
but we do have to have a way to hold it in place and actually I have this thing a bit too long as you see right here so I will have to trim these things off which I will do in a little bit um, <clears throat> but uh, we do want to make sure this holds in place which in a little bit I'll show you how to do that in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and trim the mirror and uh, get ready to show you how to pack the mirror system in there. Now, there's a variety of ways to pack the mirror into the tube so it stays in there. But in this case, I'm going to use one of my favorites, which happens to be some adhesive felt. And so I'll wrap some felt, not to where it covers up either end of the mirror, but just inside. And I'll just kind of have to guess about how much it will be necessary and I'm going to guess about right there and then I'm going to cut it really should have brought a larger pair of scissors but these will do And then I'm just going to test it and see if that's about right. It's a little loose, so I'll probably add a little bit more extra strip on the top because I want this thing to sit towards the bottom. But again, I'll go ahead and put the other piece on. Do it just about the same way. I may want to put another piece here in the center to help balance it out, but this is generally a small scope, so it really doesn't matter very much. Again, I'm going to put the extra just over the top to help hold it. And again, here too. And I'm thinking I can just take off the extra down here at the bottom. Then again, I'll place my, my, basically my worst end uh, towards the eyepiece because that's less likely where you're going to see it. And I also want to make sure that the largest end is down near the eyepiece. So it'll just go in like this. And that's actually snug enough. It should stay right in there. And there we are, and that's the concept and idea of it. Doesn't want to come out, which is what we want. Then we look in down in there and see what it looks like. And that looks pretty good. So the next step is to add our wand or wands. This allows us to have two mini wands and put a backing back here on this, which is what we'll do in the background. So I'll get back to you later. Just to uh, let you know, I've gone ahead and I've had to modify this. Since this was originally designed to handle two uh, mini wands, I just don't happen to have any. So I'm showing you how you can modify this. Uh, unfortunately, I had to add some extra wood to the end, which I would not do, but I needed to in order to handle this because it's actually thicker than the two mini wands that I have in there, which are about this long and about that big in diameter. This is almost twice the size. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting this in here and just showing you how to finish up the scope. I went ahead and cut a piece of glass. This is clear glass. Usually I add some kind of textured or 
uh, color changing glass which is available and I've already cut and ground this thing so it'll fit in here between the two pieces of wood and what I'll do is I'll cut this to where this just sits inside giving a little bit of gap so this thing can slide in and out uh, to hold this in place and I'll show you how I hold it in place and then I'm going to trim off the extra end and this should be at, at the tail end flush it'll sit in there kind of like this right in there and this will be able to move up and down behind it and then I'll show you what it looks like but that's the idea this finishes off holds this thing in place which I'll show you how that's done and I'll glue this thing in but after I let this dry and cut this which will be the next step let it dry and cut that so that this fits between there then I'll glue this in and then I'll show you how it finishes up so I'll be back with more okay to finish out the kaleidoscope uh, I went ahead and cut the back piece and then I usually I don't do this but just so that I finish up this project in time and I didn't want to cut a lot of extra wood I just went ahead and extended the end which you don't do sorry people uh, when I revisit this in the future I'll probably go through and show you the correct way of doing it all but that, again it was a modification to allow this thicker larger uh, wand to be put in there right in there so now what I'm going to do is uh, make sure that I've uncovered my mirror or I can uncover it after I'm done and I'm going to use some five minute epoxy and glue the glass backing into the scope I don't want to put too much on there I just want to hold it in place and if you're not familiar with cutting glass uh, perhaps you can talk to somebody about cutting the piece for you or finding a stained glass shop to uh, help you out with that but I'm sure you can find somebody who can help you do it or and we're going to cover glass cutting in a future episode I'm going to put a little five minute epoxy on one side five minute epoxy on the other. You can use whatever adhesives you feel comfortable with. These are, this is the one I like to use on this scope. And try not to smear too much of it, but luckily we can scrape it off it being glass. And then just let it dry and I'll come back after it dries and show you how to put this all together and show you what it looks like. Now with that epoxy good and dry, you can see that the wand will fit nicely right down here but it'll fall through. So what we need to do is we need to have something to keep it from falling through. We use typically little tiny o-rings that slide over the end hopefully slide over the end. These are a little old. I probably should have bought some new ones. You see it'll hold it right in place. Put another one on the other side to keep it in place. And Now with that our kaleidoscope is done. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in there. And there's the first kaleidoscope done. Hopefully, I'll be showing you more of those. Okay, again, I wanted to remind you that the kaleidoscope, kaleidoscope Review Magazine, it's hard for me to hold, uh, has these plans. And again, they're designed for mini wands. And that's a Good resource for you to find more. I hopefully will be doing more videos for you on kaleidoscope making and kaleidoscope related uh, topics and subjects. So please stay tuned. Thank you. Um, I do want to let you know that I don't want you to be calling me or asking me to purchase the kaleidoscopes I make on here. I will typically donate these to charity 
so that they can uh, sell them or give them away as gifts or something like that. So please don't contact me about getting hold of the kaleidoscopes I make here on the uh, YouTube on the web. Uh, they will be going to some fortunate charity. In this case, I know who this one's going to go to. And if I make a better one later, that will go there as well. Thanks. Bye.